monolithic currently this is a monolithic application and now we are migrating this to mic uh, microservices application and what are the skills you have yeah i have uh, experience on java 8 uh, spring boot uh, microservices uh, um, and kafka and uh, coming to databases i have knowledge on uh, oracle and uh, no sql mongodb yeah and you have experience in spring boot yeah yeah yes okay Okay, fine. So let's just start with some of the technical questions from these skills which you have told. Hmm. Can you tell what are the things we have done in Spring Boot? Can in you... Spring Boot, what what are the functionalities you have developed? Yeah, so we have around uh, six microservices here. Uh, using Spring Boot, we have developed these microservices. Uh, like. Uh, I mean, so for this project, we are using, like, say, uh, there is a requisition microservice. So, I mean, uh, whenever there is any jo uh, job, right, uh, job posting, so we, uh, this will handle all the requisition uh, microservice operations. And also, the same way, we have offer and talent microservice as well. Yeah, like this, we have six uh, microservices we have. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, we provide, uh, I mean, for UI, we provide uh, some of the services, let's say for uh, uh, talent, I mean, uh, getting all the talents from the uh, database or Elastic and uh, uh, searching for any talent uh, and the same way, so we can, uh, yeah, so all the talents applied to which are the job posting, which requisition they have applied. This, uh, yeah, these uh, functionalities we have implemented uh, and also if uh, offer is releasing the offer and uh, what, uh, I mean, if the talent has an offer, everything, yeah, will be this uh, offer, uh, offer microservice will be taking care of that, uh, all that uh, offer related uh, operations. Okay. Yeah. And what are the limitations you have used? Yeah, we have used the uh, uh, yeah at request mapping, at trace controller, uh, at path variable, uh, yeah at Spring Boot application, uh, at configuration, and at service, uh, at repository, at component, uh, mm -hmm. yeah at controller advice, uh, and at exception hand uh, exception handler. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell uh, what is the difference between controller and rest controller? Uh, yeah. So rest controller uh, will, uh, I mean, it will uh, serialize and deserialize the POJO class to JSON and uh, from, I mean, so whenever we get any request uh, from in the JSON format, right? So that will be deserialized into the POJO, and also whenever we return any response. Right, so it will automatically get converted to JSON and uh, return it. Whereas in controller, we need to uh, ex we need to add one more annotation at, at, at response body so that uh, it will uh, act as a REST controller. Okay. Yeah. And can you tell how to create global exception handler in the Spring Boot applications? Yes, yeah, so we can take one class uh, and annotate it with uh, at controller or twice um, and in that and yeah let's say we have any custom exceptions right so uh, we can create one uh, I mean one method and uh, annotate it with at the rate exception handler and then we can give that um, exception name so whenever uh, any any of the exception arises with that uh, exception class right so it will uh, go to that method and uh, handle uh, it will go to that method and execute that logic whichever there in the it exception handler method okay yeah so how many methods we can define in a, a controller devices classes uh, yeah we can define a, as many we can i mean uh, I mean, if we wanted to handle that uh, exception, uh, exception and uh, uh, I mean, send different response to the user, error response to the user, then uh, we can handle that in the it controller. Yeah, I mean that uh, it controller advise uh, class. Okay. Hmm. How will you 
call a restful web service from a Spring Boot application? Uh, yeah, so we are using a REST template to call um, uh, another microservice uh, and get the data. Uh, let's say if you wanted to get any data from another microservice, so at REST, uh, we'll create that uh, at REST, tem at REST template uh, and then using that we have a uh, lot of methods to write. So at get for, yeah, dot get for object uh, if we call and the, if we point the um, if you give the endpoint URL, uh, then uh, yeah, so it will call that endpoint and returns the data, and we can give the Pojo class name there, so it will deserialize into that uh, Pojo class and returns that uh, as a Pojo, that response as a Pojo. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what what are the methods you have used of a REST template? Um, yeah, uh, get for object <laughs> and post for object. Mm. Yeah, put also we have used uh, mm. In your current yeah. application, how are you managing the database transactions? Yeah, so we are uh, uh, using uh, Spring JPA for uh, as a ORM tool for this uh, Okay, so, so in GPA or the Spring Data GPA or you can say what I go into which framework you are comfortable with? Mm -hmm. uh, GPA, Spring GPA. Spring Data GPA, right? Yeah. Can you tell me what features you have used? Um, yeah, we have um, a CRUD repository um, and we have used uh, at query, at the rate query method. Uh, I mean to write a custom uh, queries uh, there. Um, mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for uh, Pojo classes, uh, we, I mean for entity classes, uh, at the rate entity annotation. Um, yeah, and for uh, primary key at ID uh, and at column, and also for generation strategy, we have used uh, I mean, sequence uh, generate sequence uh, strategy we have used. Mm. Okay. So you have used repository and all? Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm. Can you tell what is repository and what are the benefits of using repository? In the Spring Data GPA, there is something called repository, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm. Can you explain something about that? Yeah, yeah. so at repository, um, we'll make that uh, class as a repository class. I mean, so it will. Uh, I mean, so by default it provides uh, methods, uh, I mean, so there are CRUD repository and at JPA repository, there are interfaces, so we can make that, uh, we can make use of the, those interfaces and extend it, uh, extend, I mean, we can create one more uh, class uh, interface, uh, extending that uh, interface and we can uh, create number of methods there, I mean, let's say if you wanted to, um, yes, let's say there is a user table and if you wanted to, find uh, by user id so we can uh, so if we give like a find by and then the column name then it will find by that id uh, like that it will provide number of uh, uh, methods we can write, write in the repository class okay and how will you run your own queries sql queries yeah so on that uh, let's say if we we can create one more uh, um, method and then uh, uh, at a query annotation we can give there we need to write the uh, uh, query query there we need to write the query in jpa queries okay. in java what is the recent version you are working uh, java 8 mm. Can you explain what are the features you have used? Uh, yeah, so uh, we have used a uh, uh, streams concept um, and also yeah, in streams um, we have used filter, uh, map uh, and for each, uh, for iterations um, um, and uh, yeah, double colon operator uh, which we have used um, yeah, and predicate uh, functional interface we have used and lambda expressions we have used to implement the functional interfaces. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Can you tell what is functional programming? Functional programming, I mean, so uh, the function uh, can take the another function as an argument and uh, return any result. So, yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, in all the languages, other languages, it was already there and Java is introduced in the Java 8 version, this functional, I mean, it enables the functional programming. Okay. So, there are uh, different uh, features, uh, we have like a functional interfaces concept uh, and uh, default uh, methods and static methods uh, or we can write it in the interfaces that is introduced in Java 8 and also we can implement the functional interfaces using the lambda expressions. Um, yeah, and there are all the streams concept, it has introduced the streams also. So, I mean, we can uh, um, process the collection as a group. Okay. Yeah. So what benefit we will get in a which functional programming? Yeah, I mean, uh, it will reduce the code. Um, as uh, I mean, duplicate code we can uh, reduce. And let's say, uh, yeah, let's say there is um, any, uh, uh, I mean, let's say there is runnable uh, interfaces there. Okay. So if you wanted to create a thread right so we need to implement uh, i mean before java 8 we need to uh, create one separate class and then implement that uh, runnable interface and write the logic and override the run method and we need to write the logic right so here uh, i mean in one line itself we can write that um, uh, in, instead of going for one more extra class to implement that uh, interface right so using the lambda expressions it will i mean the code will be reduced here yeah. Yeah. Mm. Can you tell some differences between interface and oyster class? Yeah, so interface uh, will have all all the methods uh, abstract, uh, all the all the methods will be public and abstract. Whereas in abstract class, we can uh, we can have concrete methods also, and abstract methods as well as concrete methods also we can have. Uh, and for interface, uh, yeah, we cannot create uh, any object. And but whereas uh, yeah for abstract class we can implement uh, we can uh, create an object and uh, yeah implement we need to uh, yeah we need to in implement the interface using implements keyword and whereas if we mm -hmm. wanted to implement uh, abstract class right we need to extend uh, I mean we we will use uh, extends keyword to implement uh, to implement the abstract class. Okay. Yeah. In database, what database you told you are comfortable? Uh, yeah, MongoDB. We have idea on relational database also. Yeah, I have. Uh, I mean, before uh, three years back, I have used it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I have knowledge on the joins and uh, these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell what is the difference between union and union all? Union and union all. Um, I mean, I'm not able to recollect. I mean, maybe if I revise there, yeah, then uh, maybe. So currently, I mean, from last three end of years, uh, I'm using MongoDB. Mm. Okay. okay. How will you delete all the records in MongoDB for a specific query? All the records. Okay. So DB dot uh, the collection name dot uh, remove, and then uh, curly braces we can give. So it will remove. It will delete first record, or it will delete all the records. All the records it will remove. Okay, then how will you delete the first record? First record, uh, yeah, db dot collection dot uh, delete one and then first record, right? Uh, okay, uh, no, no, I'm not able to reconnect. If, what is the benefit of using MongoDB over the relational database? The, if the I mean in future, uh, if the application is prone to uh, Prone, prone to, I mean, if the application is prone to uh, structural changes, right? Uh, then uh, in that case, we need to go for MongoDB because uh, there are no relationships uh, and everything, right? So, let's say if in the Oracle, in the let's say in the relational database, let's say for now we have created one table, and if we wanted to add uh, some fields or remove some fields, right? So that will be big headache, uh, big headache. I mean. 
so there's there may be some cases uh, that uh, that field for the for some records we may not uh, have the data for that field so that will be like uh, space consuming there and we cannot uh, so it, i mean if it is going through some uh, structural if it is uh, may be prone to go through structural changes we can go for the uh, mongo db as we can uh, have any number of fields in, and in, and it will not affect the structure of the collection or anything yeah but whereas uh, so how do we maintain relations in uh, mongo db uh, that's a employee has uh, address right yeah okay so we can create um, we can have one more table where we yeah let's say in our uh, project uh, we have let's say talent and uh, requisition collection so talent will have all the talent ids and um, and talent data and whereas requisition has requisition ids and all the data so let's say if you wanted to uh, store what the talent uh, we apply to which requisitions right? so we have one collect connection table connection collection so there we will store uh, talent id and the requisition id there so that way we can uh, implement the relationships uh, between connections Okay. And what is the design pattern you are comfortable? Uh, sorry. What is the design pattern you are comfortable? Design pattern. Yeah, single turn design pattern. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, MVC design pattern. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And then which interview? Do you have any question? Mm, yeah. No, Anil. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll share my feedback with my chair. They'll let you know further for that process. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Anil. Yeah.